What prompted it was a couple things. One was, as you mentioned, the Supreme Court's decision back in May in Murphy versus NCAA. That was the case where the Supreme Court ruled that the federal ban on sports betting, a ban that only applied to 46 states, but not four, because they had been grandfathered out of it, one of them being, of course, Nevada. But the Supreme Court held that that was unconstitutional. And as a result of that decision, states are now able to decide if they want to legalize sports betting. The idea behind this program is that it's a response to this new landscape, that as states grapple with the decision as to whether or not to legalize sports betting and what that actually means. Does it mean all sports? Does it mean uh, can you get a license anywhere? Do you have to go to a casino? Do you have to go to a track? Do you you go to a, a convenience store? I mean, there are all sorts of possibilities. And where does the money go if money is raised from it? Even though the federal law from 1992 is unconstitutional, it's very possible that Congress could re-enter the story and contemplate legislation that might limit what states can do. And it's really a new frontier. I mean, which states will legalize sports betting? Uh, you know, What does that mean when you legalize sports betting? Who, who can actually license it? How will law enforcement agencies be involved in ensuring that uh, corruption and uh, other aspects of, you know, bribery, fraud, these are all real things, especially with games. And then, of course, there's other issues. What what will leagues want? They they have argued that they should get integrity fees. What does that mean? Will they get them? Should players associations get them? And these are big lobbying agencies when it comes to the NBA and the NFL, all these large companies. And then you're also going to have all these smaller companies, the eSports and all sorts of things like that. Absolutely. And we'll have eSports and daily fantasy sports modules that are part of the discussion because they fit into the, the larger picture of following a sport and having some kind of economic stake in the outcome of games played within that sport or plays within that sport. I mean, this has been an issue with tennis and uh, cricket where people can bet on individual plays. And, you know, the, the concern there is that it really, it it's hard to detect because it's one thing to throw a game. It's another to throw a play. Yeah. Right. Because you still it's may end up It's a lot harder winning. too to enforce. Absolutely harder. How do you get into the mind of somebody? So the, the idea of compliance and monitoring is a huge part of this program, ensuring that sports preserve their integrity, uh, that consumers' privacy rights are protected, that the integrity of statistics are protected as well. So we want to make sure that this program is comprehensive. And then also, let's not forget college sports. And I mentioned Mm -hmm. colleges with gambling. Well, what about college athletes? Or, you know, there's a larger issue of how they're compensated. And there are all sorts of litigations that have taken place recently or ongoing about whether they ought to be compensated for their labor for their use of their names, images, and likenesses. How does that fit into this this discussion? 